What's happening, everybody? It's another morning here, bright and early in Ubud. Well, not bright and early, it's 11.30 in the morning. Got uh, started on third day a little bit later than expected, that's okay, because we were doing a big, long trip to the north of Bali, a place I've never been before, ripe with waterfalls, some more mountains, a cooler scenery, some lakes, and then making our way even to Lavina Beach to do a little bit of some wildlife uh, searching and maybe swim some dolphins. So we'll take you with us, stop by stop. Gonna spend a total of two nights before coming back to Ubud and then hopefully get some really cool adventures along the way. So with that being said, we have about an hour long scooter ride to our first destination. Let's get it. All right, everybody. So we have arrived to our first destination of the day, Alun Danu Batur Beretan. <laughs> Alun Danur Beretan, something like that pretty close and this is the famous floating temple in this beautiful lake here the second biggest lake in Bali and it's like a whole different sort of atmosphere here it's really cloudy it's sort of gloomy but atmospheric a lot colder I'm dressed for the beach because that's what it feels like in Ubud and maybe Chengdu but now I should be dressed for like doing a sort of foresty hike on a fall day it's okay I don't need to change right now but so far I'm really loving the change of pace here I'm excited to explore this beautiful ground and temple Kermit the Frog has seen better days. This looks like uh, if I came here on LSD and I saw Kermit the Frog, that's what he'd look like. We then decided to walk around the temple grounds and complex, enjoying the cool crisp air before finally seeing the beautiful Loon Danu Baratan. Another road trip in Bali, another time getting rained on. Are you the person that brings the rain or is it me? It's you. Tell us, it's Vanessa in the comments below. So Vanessa and I went to the restaurant nearby, A, to shelter from the rain, and B, just to kind of pass some time, hoping that the rain would leave. And, spoiler alert, it's kind of sunny outside. So the rain, rain went away. Hopefully, it'll come again to see us, but not today. All right, some, some more thoughts on this beautiful temple, the floating temple, Alun, you know the rest guys, don't let me say it again. I'm, I'm doing terrible with my Indonesian so far, is that um, behind this nice little restaurant, which you got some food at, of course, and even behind that area, it sort of has like more of, I don't say a theme park, but like a playground you'd see in an amusement park. So it definitely is an attraction. It's more than just a temple, which is cool if you have kids or you want to walk around and see some other things, but if you're just coming here for like a purely authentic, um, you know, Balinese or Hindu temple in Bali experience, you might not get that completely with the tours and maybe a bit more of the touristic attraction elements that they're really trying to include. Uh, I don't think it's raining, I think the trees are stripping. All right, everybody, so things didn't go as planned. We have these cool little ponchos now because it's been raining off and on. Didn't want to get soaked riding around. And the original plan was to go to this waterfall called Alingaling, which is really cool for cliff jumping and swimming around. But we kind of ran out of time for the day and we also don't want to get rained on in the process. So we decided to postpone that to maybe a few days from now. Still part of this North Valley trip, but not the next stop. And we're going to go to Lovina Beach to check into our hotel and maybe explore and do some cool things around the area. I have some cool things in mind. And along the way, if you're interested, there's a really famous gate called the Handara Gate, which is really pretty, it's really massive. It's like a gate to a temple, but a lot bigger. It's actually the entrance to a golf course, believe it or not. And you can come here and get a picture. It's about $2 a person, but the wait's about 20 minutes. And I didn't really feel like just slowing things down just for an Instagrammable post. I'm here for the experience and the adventure. So just worth noting and us a little update on our fun trip so far. The temple is really cool. We have lots of cool stuff in store still. And the scenery is gorgeous as you can see. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> let's go. Do the 180. Gas pedal, gas pedal. <laughs> All right, everybody. So our plan B was to go to the Lovina Hot Springs. Don't remember the exact name of them. I'll put them in the shot right now. But anyway, these are hot springs right by Lovina Beach on the north side of Bali. We have not been to hot springs yet in Bali, which for me typically is one of my favorite things to do in a place. So hopefully they're really nice. We have a little bit of time to relax and enjoy them. Hopefully before they kick us out. And then, yeah, we'll just uh, go to a Ling Ling and do some cliff jumping. Spoiler alert. Um, hopefully in two days. So we'll see how these are. Love a good hot spring and definitely something that I wanted to try in Bali.
supposed to give you a nice massage. Let's see how it is. Ah, my head are almost hitting his teeth. You enjoying the hot spring so far, Vanessa? Yeah. She's so much taller than everybody. Look, I feel like a little short. Got her. So not only is the spring water warm and relaxing, but you can use it for a bit of a massage, which we are doing here because the water from these tubes comes from a very high area, meaning the water that hits you stronger, it kind of acts like a massage for your traps and neck and other areas. So far this hot spring really reminds me of one we went to in Aguas Calientes in Peru, where it's just kind of nestled in the jungle a little bit. The other one was right by the stream, it had nice views. This one still has nice views, but it's a little bit more secluded in this little patch of tropical jungle area. but. The water's not super warm, but it's definitely comfortable warm. And to be honest, it's a little hotter in here than it was at the mountains where I was freezing and had to put on an extra shirt. So it's probably good for the weather that it's not super hot. And you can get varying degrees of water as well. Definitely worth for a relaxing day. All right, everybody, we have arrived here in Lavina Beach. Just made it to our hotel right before sunset. You can go and check out and see if we're gonna get a nice pretty sunset here in Lavina Beach. And then we'll start for what we came for tomorrow morning. So just to recap day one of our itinerary, we already visited the temple and the hot spring and now we are at Lovina Beach, our final destination, to try and take a bit of a look at the coastal north area of Bali and to see a sunset to end our day. Hi everybody, we made it here for sunset at Lovina Beach, specifically Lovina Beach Pier. It's really pretty, you can see the mountains in the background, lots of clouds, uh, blowing up the sky with reds and yellows, but nice little yellow and gray and blue, making for really peaceful noise besides the party music in the background. Lovina seems to be a nice, quiet, charming beach town, with the draw being, of course, the dolphins, which we're checking out tomorrow morning, bright and early. Not as bright and early as some other tours, but at 7 a.m. we're starting, so you know what that means. I'm trying to go to bed at grandpa time tonight. But yeah, let me know if there's anything else I should do in Lovina Beach, because we've already left, but I just wanna know. <laughs> All right, so now that we caught the beautiful sunset at Lovina Beach, it's time to get dinner. And luckily we have a place right nearby, which has some good vegan options, I think, and has a really good cause. I'll show you that more when we get there, leaving there in a jiffy. So this place is the Global Village Foundation Cafe, and it is a non-profit restaurant, which not only employs disabled workers, but it does a really big job in helping the people in the community, whether they're disabled, whether it's conservation, they do an amazing job. And check out the website right here. The more than just their amazing cause and what they do, they make some delicious, vegan-friendly food, which for us included some Balinese curry, some Thai curry, and samosas to give us a delicious meal to end our first day. All right, everybody, it's 6.55 in the morning here in Lovina Beach, and we're waking up in our beautiful Airbnb just minutes away from the beach because we have a, our, not our, a time commitment for 7 a.m., which actually is early, but I don't feel that drained right now to do, you guessed it, dolphin watching in the ocean north of Bali. So let's get started, guys. Hopefully we see some really cool stuff and have a great time. <sighs> is it gonna be worth getting up early? Hopefully so. So, spoiler alert, it definitely was going to be worth getting up early to go dolphin watching because we were out on the water, it was beautiful and peaceful, and we were already starting to scan the waters looking for dolphins, and soon, not even sooner or later, we would see these beautiful creatures, not just one or two, but in abundance. feature of the dolphin watching is they have this little bar you can grab onto which allows you to essentially swim with the dolphins which is so cool really hard to get footage of though but even more than this we did a little bit of snorkeling after in the beautiful blue waters where we saw many great fish and even a sea star right here and we're able to explore the beautiful waters off the coast of North Bali. Yeah. 
So after being out on the water all morning, we were absolutely starving and luckily we found this place called Veggie House. They have lots of like fried appetizers, of course, but even more than that, they have local Indonesian food, including bakso, xiao bak, which was so freaking delicious, and even nasi champur, which is like a staple of Balinese cuisine. The restaurant is called Veggie House. It is all vegan and the owners are so incredibly nice. They like to take pictures of the people that come and visit and they talked to Vanessa and I for a while and even gave us some sweet treats on the house. But Vanessa was definitely feeling tired and ready to take a nap. How's the nappy girl? Nappy. Ready for a nice hike. All right, everybody. So that was Lavina Beach and we had a nice little meal at Veggie House. And apologies about not keeping eye contact because we were going down some steep stairs to the tallest waterfall in Bali, Sekampul Falls. My legs are already jello going down, but it'll be worth it to get the base of this beautiful, magnificent waterfall in the north of Bali. And this is gonna be our last stop of the day before we check into our Airbnb and then do some more things tomorrow, hopefully. And here is our route of day two. We are at Second Pool Waterfall after going to Lavina Beach to look at the dolphins and we're gonna be hiking through some absolutely beautiful, lush greenery. And guess what, everybody? Another day, another Bali adventure and more rain. It's a tropical place, hey, but can we get a day off every now and then? Probably not, but hey, you can wish. Good news, the rain finally stopped everybody. It's clearing up. This is the hidden waterfall. I think we're gonna check out Second Pool Waterfalls here. Hopefully the rain stays away so we can have fun and really enjoy the biggest waterfall in Bali. So although the hidden waterfall is incredibly beautiful, just you wait what is going to be in store at the main attraction. All right, everybody, you can surely hear it. If not, you may be able to see the mist and rain hitting the camera lens. That is because we are mere meters away from Second Pool Waterfall. Oh my God. I am soaking wet and it is so okay. Second Pool is honestly one of the most incredible waterfalls and natural attractions I've ever seen. Mother Nature is just, you can't put it into words. And before we finished our day two itinerary, we made one stop, which was not planned on the way with a beautiful viewpoint, and one other thing, which is... Monkey. Everybody. So it's our morning after the madness yesterday. Not really madness, but it's actually a really good day checking into the Ulun Danu Beretan Lake area. That's all I know how to call it because of the temple that we visited our first day. We ended up coming back this way to spend the night. And we're actually staying at this really nice little glamping spot, although we got a little place a little bit more luxurious than a glamping uh, little cabin. It's called the Plum Garden. As you can see, there's a pretty little garden in the front area, and there's a little dock which goes a bit further into the water, and you get these nice, beautiful views of these mountains around you and then the entire lake, which is the second biggest lake in Bali. So this is a beautiful way to wake up in the morning. Breakfast is included, got some nasi goreng, and yeah, just gonna try to enjoy it here before we do maybe our last thing as the wind picks up in Northern Bali before we head back to the lake. This was a part of our trip where we just wanted to take things slow, not rush, not get going, but just really try and take in the tranquil, calm sort of atmosphere and vibe that we could experience not only in northern Bali but specifically around the rim of the beautiful Baratan Lake. So we are checking out the beautiful Palom Garden. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So beautiful, so relaxing, great views of the lake and the mountains behind you and uh, yeah we just really wanted to enjoy the atmosphere so we took a bit longer than normal. We checked out at like 11 30 whereas normally we like to check out like around 10. We got up at 8 30. Just really wanted to have some coffee, enjoy the views and some food. But now we're heading to the last destination for our north trip of Bali. I think it's the last, probably the last, this Aling Aling waterfall. Now this waterfall is famous for cliff jumping at three different heights 
and there's a couple waterfalls you can visit in the area. So really excited. It's a bit further away than I was hoping. I think closer to like 50 minutes. I thought it was closer to like 40, but hey, not the end of the world. We're gonna try and check that out and then uh, make our way back to Ubud. So come with us for our next adventure in North Bali. All right, we have made it to the beginning of Alingaling -Aling Falls. Just doing a little potty break before we hike down and hopefully do some really cool activities. Um, I have a feeling they charge us a lot more. They asked where we're from, said American. And I said we should say not from America. And um, they offered us 200,000, which for information is per person about, gotta do the math, $13.50 a person. $13.50, $13.50 a person. I thought it was a little expensive. I read online, I thought it was close to like 100,000. Maybe the price went up since COVID, who knows? So I offered 150, they said 175. I only have like a certain amount of money in my pocket that I need for gas and food and stuff. So I think that's okay. 175 is like, I don't know, 11, $12 a person. Oh, $12 a person. So hopefully it's really cool. We're gonna do a lot of things today before we end our trip in North Bali. So stay tuned as we adventure a ling a ling and other things around. So now that we got the entry all squared away, we made our descent down into the valley of Aling Aling to explore not only some beautiful waterfalls, but turn a calm morning into an adventure adrenaline filled afternoon. Let's send it. All right, everybody, so we did the slide, which was a lot of fun. You go fast as hell down it. Maybe you can't tell when it's zoomed out, but if you're going down, it feels like you're getting thrown. It looks like you're going, what's the name of that sport? So we go down those like uh, little sleds, bob sleds. It feels like you're going on a bob sled through the waterfall. And the five meters feels like it's higher than five meters. I've done some cliff jumping in my life. Not a ton, but enough to have a idea. Maybe it's closer to like four meters. I don't know. Or actually, maybe closer to like five and a half, six meters, like 20 feet maybe really fun but that is waiting us next a 10 meter jump and then we're getting even higher from there i think it was less scary than the first one what Alright everybody, so that was officially my highest cliff jump ever. 15 meters, that's about like 45, maybe it's closer to 50 feet. I don't know, I'll say 50 feet just because it sounds cooler. And yeah, it was really fun, really cool, but when you're jumping at that height, it's very unforgiving. So you have to have perfect form. I was afraid of leaning too far back because seeing Vanessa do that and she got a nice booty bruise. So I was kind of like hunched over a little bit and my chest hit the water, not directly, but more at an angle. So first it felt like I got kicked in the chest but it went away pretty quickly. So I feel fine, a lot of fun. Maybe I'll do it again, but yeah. Really beautiful waterfall too and a great place to go for a little swim. And I love adrenaline activities and cliff jumping was something on my list to do in Bali. Made it just right at the end. So much fun, definitely worth getting ripped off. So now that we are done with those three cliff jumps, five meter, 10 meter, 15 meter, we are going to the actual Ling Ling, as I almost tripped waterfall. So more to come in this beautiful trip. All right, everybody. So we've made it to Aling Aling waterfall. And in case you wondered, Aling Aling means twin in, I don't know if it's Balinese or Indonesian, but they're actually two equally tall, equally beautiful little waterfalls come together to make for one beautiful, really tall waterfall. Really cool to see this after a bunch of cliff jumping at the other ones we just located. Maybe we will hit up Blue Lagoon, unless we already did already, I have no idea. Either way, it's really powerful, really loud and magnificent. And right nearby included that little total package we talked about at the beginning. So, so far, this is the fourth waterfall we've seen. Definitely the most magnificent and majestic so far. That was a ling-a-ling, -a -ling, everybody. The last stop of the day, Blue Lagoon. It's 
little cloudy right now, so it might not look as blue as possible, but I'm still feeling up for an adventure. What an adventure that was, everybody. So much fun, so many activities to reflect on. Glad I left that to my last mini thing to do here in North Bali because definitely some of my favorite memories were created here. Guys, so on the way home, we wanted to stop and get some food because we're starving, something preferably on the way to Ubud. We stopped at this place called Cafe Tahu which tahu means tofu in uh, Indonesian, in case you're wondering. So we figured it has to be vegan friendly. And it's right on the way, so why not? Guys, you definitely have to stop here. This food was absolutely delicious. Love the tofu, love the way it was cooked. Really good sauce, really good flavors. And everything, which was one appetizer, so like fried crispy tofu. Again, everything was tofu based. And two really good mains with veggies and tofu and a sauce and a tea. All that together was only $4. So it's great, really delicious and a great price. Definitely come to Cafe Taco, everybody. And they, she spoke good English and was able to tell us we're vegan and customize it to take out the egg. So what more can you ask for? And soon thereafter, we are right back in Ubud where it all started, ending what was truly an unforgettable, amazing three-day itinerary in Northern Bali, including waterfalls, temples, wildlife, and more. And if you want to see more adventures or beautiful, more remote parts of Bali, make sure to check out my East Bali video where it is filled with rice fields and beautiful sort of adventures and more untouched areas of the island. And make sure to subscribe for more Bali travel content and other travel content in general. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.